expectancy had grown among the people who were beginning to think that John might be the Christ. So John declared before them all, I baptize you with water, but someone is coming, someone who is more powerful than I am, and I am not fit to undo the straps of his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. Now when all the people had been baptized, and while Jesus, after his own baptism, was at prayer, heaven opened, and the Holy Spirit descended on him in bodily shape like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved. My favour rests on you. The Gospel of the Lord. It's you, Lord Jesus Christ. That would have been quite a scene. <laughs> yeah. I'm sort of thinking too, you know, at the beginning of the year, a feeling of expectancy had mm. come in. And it sort of taps into our own expectations, our own hopes in a sense and desires yeah. uh, for the year ahead. Um, and I, I suppose what I like about this scene, um, John can assume the humblest of humble roles, that, you know, the, the one who would undo the sandals of the visitors was the very least of the servants, the slaves in the household. Yeah. And so here's John um, really acknowledging, well, look, you know, my place um, is, is really that low. Yeah. Um, and, and so um, he's that much more open, really, I suppose, in a sense, to, um, to perceive and to see the real kind of um, presence of the Lord in, yeah. in the humblest of places. It's interesting, isn't it? I mean, this is like the moment. This is like the moment, isn't it? I mean, you've got John, and he would know who Jesus is. And he's still saying, look, there's somebody coming. It's not, you know, just wait, just wait. He doesn't say, look, it's this guy here. <laughs> he just says, look, just wait. <laughs> and so Jesus, you know, when he's at prayer, that's the moment arrives. And we don't really hear about John the Baptist after that apart from the seven veils thing, but, you know, so this is the moment when it all changes, it all shifts, and it's in the setting of um, everybody doing the right and proper thing. So, um, I mean, Jesus wouldn't need to be baptised, but it's a sign of his, you know, humility and yeah. humanity. Um, and humanity, very much is can't get more normal than that to do what everybody else does, mm. but then out of that comes this great, this great moment. You know, as I sit with this scene though too, there's another piece of scripture that reverberates around to me, and it's that line, um, it's great as John the Baptist was, you know, mm. those who are in the kingdom, those who have listened and obey my word, mm. they're greater than John the Baptist. Yeah. There is an unborn woman greater than John the Baptist, yet the one listens to my word is greater. And so, you know, since yeah. these are Baptists who are so penitential to the extreme and, yeah. and his preparation and openness to God. Yeah. And courageous as anything because he, he literally preaches knowing that he's going to sort of, you know, taking a huge risk literally yeah. with his head, yeah. his life. But yet we are greater than John the Baptist who, who actually, because we're so beloved, um, can't are called into yeah. Um, union with Christ and His kingdom. So I, 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 kind of, I find that comparison quite staggering. And so, yeah. where and how are we then, in a sense, to pick up the role of being beloved? Um, just simply to let that um, soak into ourselves. There's that lovely line in the scriptures from Zephaniah earlier in the Advent where God takes such delight in us, He sings and dances. Mm. And um, I think that's another side to our Christian lives that we really need to grasp that, you know, it's not all about avoiding God's, you know, sort of waving finger. He, we are the beloved and he delights in us, you know, if only we would respond to the grace that he's so lavishly pouring on us. Yeah, there's a real happiness about it, you're right. Um, you know, if I think about going to baptisms, you know, a child or whatever, and you see this innocent little scrap of a thing. Mm -hmm. um, and the words of the baptism, um, I, I think, are 
uh, you know, a deeply moving, you know, what do you ask for this child? And you think, um, to be free of pain, to be clever and bright, to be just like me, to be, you know, whatever <laughs> you might. But in fact, what you ask for is eternal life, you know, so if that's the thing, that's the purpose of it. And, and a closeness of union with God yeah, that yeah. you enjoy yeah. even now. Yeah. And, you know, that's, and here it is. There it is. And there we have, is. you know, the very the Son of God going through the same thing, mm. saying, you know, look, I'm, I'm, I'm here now. Mm. Yeah, I think it's a lovely. And, and you're right, a great way to start the year when we are thinking that's it. it. Yeah, yeah. It puts it all into another perspective, doesn't yeah. it? I am God's beloved daughter, yeah. God's beloved son. Yeah. If I try to live my life, he mm. began each day with that realisation. Yeah. Wonderful. Well, thank God for John the Baptist. Absolutely. <laughs> thank God for John the Baptist. And, um, you know, and what a great reflection to, to have at the start of this year.